Bible today, let's uh, open our Bible, please, to the book of Genesis, the first chapter. And I want to be talking to you this morning, real quickly. I know everybody's keen to eat and everything, so we give God praise for that. I'm looking forward to my cheesecake. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. But uh, let's pray first. Father, we thank you as we go to your word, that your word is already blessed, that your word is already anointed. And Lord, have your way in our lives today, in Jesus' name. Everybody say amen. Amen. Let's go to Genesis chapter 1. I want to talk to you today about the basics of salvation. The basics of salvation that you need to understand and you need to be aware. Now, in communion, we already had talked to you about the basics of salvation. But I'm going to give you a bit more details about your salvation and God's plan for our lives. Now, let's go, please, to the book of Genesis chapter 1. And I want to take you on a little journey today. I'm going to take you on a little journey. Genesis chapter 1. We're going to read from verse 1. Genesis chapter 1. And we are going to read from verse 1. And uh, if, you don't, if you don't know where Genesis is, may God have mercy on your soul. All right. Genesis chapter 1 and verse 1 says, In the beginning God created the heaven and the earth. All right, everybody now, whether you're in Jacksonville or Louisville, everybody read with me now. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. One more time, please. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Now, what I want you to do is to circle the word God. The word God here, ladies and gentlemen, is the Hebrew word Elohim. And when the Bible talks to you about Elohim, it refers to God as the creator. So our first understanding, our first revelation of God that is revealed to us is that God is our creator. Can you say amen? Before anything ever existed, God was the creator. Can you say amen? So lift up your hands right now and say with me, God is our creator. creator. Now put your hand on your heart and say, God is my creator. So our first revelation is that God is the creator. Now, let's go to Genesis chapter 2. Now, of course, you know, Genesis chapter 1, God has already, on verse 28, if you put verse 26 to verse 28, please, he creates everything. And and all over Genesis chapter 1, you're going to hear over and over and over again, and God said, and God said, and God said, and that is talking about Elohim, all right? Now, let's come down to verse, uh, verse 26. Everybody read with me now, please. And Elohim, everybody say Elohim. Elohim said what? Let us make man in our image and after our likeness. By the word man, write the word Adam. God is saying, Elohim says, I'm making humanity, I'm making a man, I'm making Adam in my image and in my likeness and let them have dominion. Can you say Amen. All right, now let's go to Genesis chapter (coughs) 2. So our first revelation is that God is our creator. Let's go to Genesis chapter 2, and this is right before Adam blows up everything. Let's go to Genesis chapter 2, please. Let's read from verse 4. Genesis chapter 2, please. Verse 4, 5, and verse 7. Verse 4, verse 5, and verse 7. And now tell me what you notice that's that's different here. Ready? One, two, go. Let's all read together, please. These are the generations of the what? Heavens and of the earth when they were created in the day that what? The what? The Lord God. So what do you notice different here in chapter 2? Lord. It says Lord God. I want you please to write this down in your Bible. The word Lord here is the Hebrew word Jehovah like we would say in English. But in Hebrew it's the word Yahweh. Okay, it's the word Yahweh, or we would say Jehovah. So I want you to write this down. What is Yahweh? I want you to write this down, please. So Elohim refers to God as the creator, as the omnipotent creator. Can you say amen? The second revelation we see here is that it is Lord God. So everybody say Jehovah, Jehovah. Elohim. Elohim. Say it again, Jehovah, Jehovah. Elohim. Elohim. Now let's say this way, say Yahweh. Elohim. Now, what is Yahweh? What is Yahweh or Yahweh? All right, write this down, please. Jehovah unveils God as the self-existing Lord. Does it need anybody to be existent? Can you say amen? 
Hallelujah. He's all God by himself. But here's the deal about Jehovah. It is God's redemptive name. Jehovah is what? God's redemptive name. And that he reveals himself progressively. Is what I need you to understand that. So, number one, God is our creator. And even before man sinned, God shows you that man is already in need of a savior. Why? Because man will mess up. God is not only omnipotent, God is omniscient, which means what? God knows everything. The Bible tells you that God knows the end from the beginning and the beginning from the end. Can you say amen? So God is omniscient. So Jehovah means that, that it is his redemptive name. It is the self-existing God, the self-existent God who doesn't need anybody to be existing. And he reveals himself progressively. Everybody say progressively. So before man ever sinned, God is showing himself as the savior of mankind. Now, <coughs> let's look at verse 5. Verse 5, please. All right, everybody read again. Put me together, please. Let's read together. And every plant of the field before it was in the earth, and every herb of the field before it grew, for what? The Lord God. Everybody say, the Lord God. Okay, one more time. Now look at verse 7, please. Verse 7. All right, let's read together, please. And what? The Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground. So even before man was sin, or sin, God already showed himself as the Savior. Can you say amen? Okay, now, so God is revealing to you that man would already need a Savior before man sinned, knowing that man will sin. So I want you to write this down. God is omnipotent. God is omnipresent, and God is omniscient. That means God is all-powerful. He's present at all place and in all times, and God knows all things. He's not just present everywhere. He's present in everywhere and in all time. He's in the past, he's in, he's in the present, and he's already in the future. Can you say amen? Even before you are born next week, uh, you are uh, uh, waking up next week, uh, he is already there. Can you say amen? Thank you, Lord Jesus. Now, <clears throat> then you know, in Genesis chapter 3, man abdicates his authority by sinning, by yielding to Satan. And so man now sells the whole of humanity, himself and the whole of humanity, to Satan. So every man born in the earth is born in sin, and Satan is their master. Are you listening? Now, let's go to Genesis chapter 3 and verse 15. Now, Genesis chapter 3 and verse 15. So, I want you to write this down. I want to be real quick today because I want you to go downstairs and eat in a minute. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Take my time. Take my time. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Now, I want you to notice something. Genesis chapter 2, God's revealed himself as the what? The Lord God. Everybody say, he's the Lord God. Come on, say it with me. He's the Lord God. He's Jehovah Elohim. Now, my God, put your hand on your heart. Say, he's my Jehovah. my Jehovah. Amen. Which means what? He's my Redeemer. Look, I want you to write this down. Before Adam ever sold us to Satan, God already had a buyback plan. Can you say amen? Hallelujah. Woo! Somebody ought to get happy in this place. God already had a buyback plan. God never plays catch up to the devil. He's always ahead of the devil. Can you say amen? Glory to God. What a mighty God we serve. Let's go to Genesis chapter 3 and verse 15. This is the first prophetic word that God pronounces and he gives it to Satan. All right, now. And it says this, and I want you to look at this. Now, in theology, this is known as the Proto-Evangelion. What does that mean? That means that's the first gospel. The gospel did not manifest through Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. The, the gospel, which means good news, manifested right here in Genesis chapter 3 and verse 15. Can you say amen? It's called the first gospel. Come on, lift up your hands and say with me, the first gospel. 
And it's right there at the fall of man in the garden of Gethsemane. And God said to Satan, everybody read with me now, please. And I will put what? Enmity between thee and the woman and between what? Thy seed <coughs> and her seed. It shall bruise your head and you shall bruise his heel. That's called the proto-evangelion, which means the first good news. Incidentally, a prophetic word is a good news. Can you say amen? A prophetic word is, is when God gives you a word to bring about a change of destiny. Can you say amen? And so the first word here, the first gospel, God unveils to Satan that man's seed has already been corrupted. Are you listening? But that the Redeemer will be the seed of a woman. Are you listening? And that... It will bruise your head. It will break your authority. Head speaks of authority. It will take away your authority, but you shall bruise his heel. By the word bruise his heel, God is showing you that the seed of the woman will have to die to take away the authority that Adam gave to Satan. Are you listening? So, the authority that Satan has over humanity will be by the death of the seed of the woman. So right there in the Garden of Gethsemane, God showed you that death has to take place in order for man to be placed back in the place of authority. Can you say amen? That's why he said you will bruise his heel, but he will bruise your head. Can you say amen? Now, Eve hears this. She knows that it's going to be the seed of a woman, right? Right? But now look in your Bible, please. Look in your Bible with me. <clears throat> and you know the story here. Let me just quickly tell you the story. Adam and Eve sinned. Let's go to Genesis chapter 3. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Genesis and chapter 3, please. And now let's look at verse 20. Look at verse 20. We're talking about the basics of salvation that you need to be aware of. The basics of salvation. Genesis chapter 3 Verse 20 till verse 21. Now, remember that Adam, what did he do? He covered himself with what? Fig leaves, right? And that has always been man's problem. Man's problem is that he wants to cover himself. Man's problem thinks that he can cover, he can cover his nakedness, he can cover his sin by what his own, he does. Cain did the same thing as well, right? But you can't cover yourself. And look what the Bible says here, Genesis chapter 3. And verse 20, please. Genesis chapter 3, verse 20 and verse 21. Look in your Bible. Everybody got it now? Let's read together, please. Verse 20 and verse 21. Now follow along in your Bible with me now. Everybody read now. And Adam called his wife's name, what? Eve. Okay? Because she was the mother of all living. All right. Now read verse 21, please. Unto Adam. Now, by the word, Adam, write the word humanity, mankind. Unto Adam also and his wife did who? The Lord God. Did who? The Lord God. Jehovah Elohim. All right? Make what? Coats of skins and clothe them. Now, watch this. For God to make coats of skins, there was no world of leather store or Macy's or Dillard's right there in the Garden of Gethsemane. God had to kill an animal. And blood had to be shed in order for humanity, for man to be covered. Are you listening to me now? Can you say amen? And scholars tell us that, they, they tell us that the, the animal that was slain was a lamb. Can you say amen? So right there, I want you to write this down from the book of Genesis. I want you to write this down. This is the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Number one, man cannot save himself. Man cannot cover himself. Man cannot by himself back. Number two, blood has to be shed in order for man to be saved and for man to be covered. Can you say amen? <coughs> it was the blood of a lamb in the garden of Gethsemane and it's portraying you into the future to the blood of Jesus on the cross of Calvary. Can you say amen? amen. Number three, the third thing you need to write down what did that animal do to deserve death? Nothing. 
Number three, the innocent will die for the guilty. Question I've got to ask you this morning today. What did Jesus do to deserve death? Nothing. Even Judas said, I have betrayed innocent blood. Jesus' blood is innocent blood. So God showed you that the innocent will die for the guilty. Can you say amen? But man being man, we do things our own way like many of you do things your own way. But the Bible says there's a way that seems right unto a man, but the end thereof are the what? The ways of death. When you do things your own way, you're not going to find life. When you do things your when you do things God's way, that's when life comes. Now Eve hears that the seed of a woman will bruise the head of Satan. Now look in your Bible, please. Genesis <clears throat> chapter four, verse one. Genesis chapter four, <clears throat> and we're going to read verse one, please. Genesis chapter four and verse one. You got it? Let's read verse one, please. Ready? One, two, go. And Adam knew his wife, and she what? She conceived and bare Cain and said, I have what? Gotten me a man from the Lord. Now, in her mind, God has said, the seed of the woman will crush the head of the serpent. In her mind, my, 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 I've gotten me a man. I've gotten me a seed from the Lord. She thought that Cain would be the promised seed. But here's the problem, though. Look what it says here. Everybody read verse verse 1, please. Read verse 1 together, please. Where do you want to go? And what? Adam. Everybody say what? Adam. Who did it? Adam. Who did it? Adam. Knew his wife. The word knew here is an old English word, which simply means he had sex with his wife, right? And he, she conceived. But the conception was not the incarnation. The conception, ladies and gentlemen, was the seed of Adam. And we know that the seed of Adam was fallen. So Cain could not be the promised seed. Are you listening? Cain is a type of you and I as humanity. Adam and Eve had two children. And I want you to write this down, please. Adam and Eve had two children, and you'll discover that it's always the rejection of the first, which lines up with what Corinthians says, all right, with what, which lines up with what the book of Corinthians says. The first man was of the earth, but the second man, the second man, the second man is always the one that brings the redemption. That's why Cain and Abel, Cain shows humanity, the Adamic race, are you listening? And Abel, who was Abel? Abel was a shepherd. What, what's his name? Abel. What does Abel mean? Abba Elohim, right? Abba Elohim. It's a combination of Abba and what? Elohim. Abel is a type of the Lord Jesus. Abel was a shepherd and he was killed by Cain. Jesus, our good shepherd, our great shepherd, and our chief shepherd was killed, not just by the Romans, not just by the Jews, but your sin and my sin, put him on the cross. Are you listening? So that's when you'll see from the beginning, Cain and Abel, Esau and Jacob. Right? Who else? Ishmael and Isaac. God never recognized Ishmael. God never recognized Esau. God never recognized Cain. Because there's no salvation in the firstborn man. Salvation can only come from the Lord Jesus Christ. Can you say amen? When Abraham was taking his son up to the Mount Moriah, God said to him, can you please tell them to stop walking around in the, in the uh, corridor, please? If they want to go, go over there in the, in the children's room. Can, Barry, can you tell them, please? Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. All right. Now, <clears throat> <coughs> let's go here for quickly, real quickly, please. Thank you, Jesus. 
Write this down, please. So, Cain kills Abel. Right? Cain kills Abel. And he kills what, what to dash the hope of Eve. To dash the hope of Eve. Now, let me show you something here. Go in your Bible with me to the book of Genesis chapter 4, please. And look at verse 17. Genesis chapter 4, please. Hallelujah. <clears throat> and look at verse 17. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. I'm going to show you two verses here, and I'm going to show you what man has been doing ever since then. What man has been doing ever since then. Look in Genesis chapter 4. Adam, uh, Cain kills his brother. Before we read verse 17, let's read verse, <clears throat> let's read verse uh, 10, please. God is talking to Cain. He says, where's your brother? He says, am I my brother's keeper? Verse 10. What, what hast thou done? The voice of your brother's blood cries from the ground. Verse 11, please. Now, everybody read now, please. Read verse 11, please. Ready? Want to go? And now thou art cursed from the earth. And now what? Thou art cursed from the earth. I want you to please write this down. If Cain is symbolic of the human race, then man is cursed like Cain is cursed. Are you listening? We were all born cursed. Thou art cursed from the earth, which has opened her mouth to receive your brother's blood and from your hand. Now, everybody read now, please. Verse 12. Let's read verse 12 together. Ready, one, two, go. And when you till us the ground, it shall not henceforth yield unto thee her what? Her strength and her what? And a fugitive and a vagabond. This is what man became. Every man born in the earth. Irrespective of your nation, irrespective if you were born in America, irrespective of your race, whether you're white, black, brown, yellow, purple, I don't care what you are. All of us are born as vagabonds and fugitive in the earth. Are you listening? Man is born now cursed. Man is now a vagabond in the earth, and man is now a fugitive in the earth. And so, what does he do? Look in your Bible, please. Verse 17. <clears throat> Verse 17, please. Thank you, Lord Jesus. There's a mark. Look, in fact, look at verse 15. Verse 15 says, there's a mark on man. Every man, hallelujah, born in the earth has a mark on his head, letting you know you don't belong to God. Okay? Verse 15. All right. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Okay, the Lord God set a mark upon Cain, lest any finding him should kill him. All right, now, let's come down now to verse 17, please. Let's read verse 17. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Ready, one, two, go. And Cain knew his wife, and she conceived and bare Enoch, and he what? Built a city. After man is cursed, there's a mark on him. What does he go about to do? Build cities. And that has been the history of humanity. For 6,000 years, man has been building cities. And he had sons. And because of time, he had many sons. And what did his sons do? Make music. And that is what man has been doing from one generation to the next generation. We are building cities after cities after cities. And we're making music and music and music. But that cannot save your soul. All the building of cities, all the music that we, that, that we do cannot save your soul. Are you hearing me, saints? Until, until we come to the place to understand what the gospel is all about. From Genesis chapter 22 then, where is the land? Where is the land? Now, I want you to write this down. We're going to close with this. I want you to write this down, and we're going to close with this, please. Thank you, Lord Jesus. 
Let's go to Psalms 23, please. Psalms 23. Remember what I told you about Jehovah. Jehovah means God's redemptive name. That he unveils himself progressively. Our first revelation was that he is our Savior. Can you say amen? All right, now let's quickly go through that. Psalms 23, we're going to read from verse 1. <clears throat> Thank you, Jesus. All right, Psalms 23. Got it? I want you to write this down. I'm going to give you seven redemptives name of God, and then we're going to close. Number one, the Lord is my what? Shepherd. Lift up your hands. Say, the Lord is my shepherd. Write this down, please. All right? It is the Hebrew word Jehovah Rohi. Jehovah what? Rohi. Which means what? The Lord, my shepherd. He will take care of you. The good shepherd left heaven, glory to God, came down to the earth to save you of your life. Can you say amen? So lift up your hands, say with me. Say, he's Jehovah, my Savior. Come on, talk to me. Say, he's Jehovah, my Savior. He's Jehovah, my shepherd. Now, lift up your hands. Now, that's what the word Jesus means. Yeshua means Jesus, my salvation. Yahweh, my salvation. So, so lift up your hands right now. Say, Jesus, Jesus is my salvation. And then what? Jesus is my shepherd. Glory to God. <coughs> Number two, write this down, please. <clears throat> All right, look at this now. The Lord is my what? Shepherd, I shall not want. He is my Jehovah Jireh. He's the Lord, my provider. Can you lift up your hands right now and say this with me? He's my Jehovah, he's my Jehovah Rohi. Come on, talk to me. Say, he's my Jehovah Rohi. And he's my Jehovah Jireh. The first time that was used was in Genesis chapter 22. Are you listening? My God, son, God will provide himself. He is your Jehovah Jireh. He will provide himself as the lamb that takes away the sin of the world. Now today, in today's context, we use it for money. And that's fine. Because God is your provider. God is your <coughs> financer. Can you say amen? But more importantly, he provided himself for you as the lamb of God. And if God spared not his son, how much more will he, will he give you freely all things? If God can give you his blood, he'll give you a house, he'll give you a car, he'll give you a blessing, he'll give you a child. Can you lift up your hands and say, I receive that. Can you say amen? So he's Jehovah my Savior. He's now Jehovah my Shepherd. <coughs> All right? And he's Jehovah my Provider. I shall not want. Next verse, please. Hallelujah. He maketh me... To lie down in green pastures, he leadeth me by what? The still waters. He's Jehovah Shalom. He's Jehovah what? Shalom. Which means what? My peace and my prosperity. Can you say amen? The word shalom means what? Nothing missing and nothing broken. Can you say amen? Next verse, please. Hallelujah. Amen. He does what? He restoreth my soul. Write this down. He's Jehovah Rapha. He's the Lord, my healer. Can you say amen? So lift up your hands right now and say this with me. Say, he's Jehovah, Jehovah. my Savior. Savior. Come on, talk to me. Come on, lift. I said lift up your hands. Come on, lift up your hands. Say, he's Jehovah, Jehovah. my Savior. Savior. He's Jehovah. <coughs> my shepherd, he's Jehovah, my provider, he's Jehovah, my peace, he's Jehovah, my healer, hallelujah, can you shout amen, and he's the same yesterday, today, and forever, if he healed yesterday, he will heal tomorrow, and he will heal today, because I am the Lord, I do not change, glory to God forever. Can you say amen? amen? Can you say amen? What am I trying to tell you? When doctor gives up on you, Jehovah Rapha is still the same. Can you say amen? amen. Hallelujah. When they gave Jairus no hope, when the doctors gave Jairus no hope, and the woman with the issue of blood spent all that she had, and, and, and the doctors could not get her healed, but the great physician, Jesus, our healer, healed her, and he has not lost any of his power. Can you shout amen? Yeah. 
Glory be to God. Hallelujah. And he's not just a restorer of your health from infirmity, but every curse the enemy puts upon you, every ancestral curse the enemy puts upon you, every maternal disease, every paternal disease that the enemy put upon you. Amen. I'm trying to tell you, whatever killed your forefathers has no right to kill you. Can you say amen? Come on, lift up your hands with me. I will live and not die. You ought not to be afraid. I was in the, I can't remember the village name. It was somewhere outside uh, Oweri in Nigeria. Did a crusade in Oweri. Crowds to the capacity. People getting saved. In Africa, when people get saved, get happy, they sing and dance with a handkerchief. Am I right? The handkerchief goes up in the air. I've got videos of handkerchief going in the air. My first time preaching to, to over 200,000 people was in Boko, Nigeria. Amazing. And all you see is a sea of handkerchief. But as I finished preaching, I can't remember the name of the village in Oweri. This guy walked up to me. He wasn't happy that people were getting saved. He had a ring on his finger. He pointed it at me. He says, I curse you by the spirit, by the God in my ring. He thought I would be afraid. And I looked at him in the eyes. See, I, 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 I'm one of the I've been to Nigeria 148 times. More than you combined. <laughs> More than you lot combined. One of the, I grew up under Chris Tunde Joda and Bishop Oyedipo. <laughs> Bishop Oyedipo was doing a crusade. I'm talking about people with power. I'm not talking about people who are tiptoeing through the tulips. I'm talking about people who will preach the gospel. You live and you die by the gospel. There's witches. This witch was ups upsetting the, the meeting. One of the greatest men of God you'll ever came to our church in London, England was Benson Idahosa. <laughs> Benson Idahosa was preaching in the village one day, and they were preaching through um, interpreters. He says, tomorrow, bring the deaf. The interpreter got it wrong. He said, tomorrow, bring the dead. So he went to the crusade, and there was a bunch of dead people there. They said, what's going on? He said, you said, bring the dead. They said, no, I said, bring the deaf. But that did not deter him. And he raised people from the dead. America had a witch's convention. And the chief wizard from America was going to go to Nigeria. I remember this distinctively. I was living in London back then. And he was, a, he was doing a crusade in our church. Paul was there in Holborn. That's where it was. And they said, on such and such and such a date, there's going to be a witch convention in Nigeria. And we watched Benson Idahosa, Archbishop ben Benson Idahosa. We were about 14, 15, 16 years old. He says, it will not happen. It cannot happen and it will not happen. And the press was saying, what did you say? It will not happen. He went back to Lagos and he says, it will not happen. He was in Benin. A week before the convention, everything was ready for the chief wizard. Had an asthma attack and could not make it. That's what you call raw power. That's what you call raw power. Can you say amen? I was sitting about Bishop Oyedipo. Oyedipo, they were trying to upset the, the meeting. And this wizard was making all kind of noise. He looked up to heaven. He said, God, 
I don't want to see this guy in heaven. He's come to curse people. That guy dropped dead right there and then. So this guy come and cursed me. He thought I would be upset. But Jehovah is my peace. Come on, put your hand in your heart. Say, Jehovah is my peace. Come on, say it again. Jehovah is my peace. Jehovah is my provider. Jehovah is my restorer. Jehovah is my Rapha. Hallelujah. He's Elohim El Shaddai. I looked at him and I said, if your God can fit in your ring, you have a very tiny God. But my God, hallelujah. Come on, lift up your hands and say, my God. Heaven is his throne and the earth is his footstool. He said, if I was hungry, I wouldn't ask you for anything. He said, I am Alpha and the Omega. I'm the beginning and I'm the end. I'm the first and I'm the last. If there is any God before me, I don't know them. There's only one God. His name is Jesus. He's Jehovah. Can you say amen? amen. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. We need some powerful people. Can you say amen? Let's close with this. He's Jehovah Nissi, the Lord my banner. He's Jehovah Sikanu, the Lord my righteousness. And he's Jehovah Shama. He's always there for me. Can you say God is always there for me? How many, of you can, how many of you can testify that God has always been there for you? Come on now, amen. When you were sick, he was there for you. When you were broke, he was there for you. When all your friends and your families left you and abandoned you, he was still there for you. David said, when my mother and my father forsake me, then the Lord will gather me up. Can you say Amen. Made up my mind a long time ago. Anybody leaves me? Tough. I got Jesus on my side. Can you say amen? When I die, I'm not going to stand before you. 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 I'm going to stand before the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, the bright and morning star. Can you say amen? I'm going to stand before Jehovah. And I look at him in the eyes and say, thank you. You never abandoned me. You never left me. When we came here, we didn't know anybody, hardly anybody. <laughs> Amen. Jesus helped us. To get this church, Jesus helped us. To get this building, Jesus helped us. To get the house which I live now, now live inside, Jesus helped me. When the bank said, oh, we're not going to work with you, amen, you know who helped us? Jesus helped us. Can you say amen? When I was in the coma dying, and the doctor said, you're not going to make it, you know who helped me? You know who stood by my side? Jehovah Rapha stood by my side. Can you say amen? amen. He said, I will never leave you nor forsake you until the end of the age. Stand on your feet, please. Hallelujah. The basics of salvation. You cannot save yourself, ladies and gentlemen. He is everything. He's Jehovah, your Savior. He's Jehovah, <coughs> your shepherd. He's Jehovah, your healer. He's Jehovah, your peace. He's Jehovah, your righteousness. He's Jehovah. <coughs> He's always there. While every hand is bowed, Jacksonville, Louisville, while every head is bowed today, I'm going to make a simple <clears throat> invitation. If you are here this morning and you've never given your life to Jesus, what do I mean by that? I mean you go, you've been to church. You know about church. You know about Jesus. But you've never surrendered your life to the Lord. As you look around this world, you can see right now what's going on in Israel. By the way, Israel and Hamas is basically the fight between two brothers. It's the fight between Ishmael and Isaac. It's the fight between Esau and Jacob. <clears throat> As you're standing here today, if there is any young man, any young lady, any man, any woman under the sound of my voice that says, I need 
to surrender my life, whether in Jacksonville, whether you're watching on the internet, there's only one way of salvation, and that is through Jesus. So while every head is bowed, I'm going to ask this question this morning. If you need Jesus Christ, you want to receive Jesus Christ, this is your own personal. You can't look to the left or to the right. When you stand before God, there'll be nobody on your right-hand side and your left-hand side. It's just you and God. So today, it's just you and God. We wanted to give a simple message of salvation this morning. If you're here this morning and you say, okay, I've heard the gospel. The gospel is I can't save myself. I need a Savior. If you want to receive Jesus as your Lord and your Savior, and you want to, once and for all, surrender your life to Jesus, I want you to slip up that hand right now, and I will pray with you, and I will lead you to the Lord Jesus Christ. Only He can save you. So if there's anyone here today under the sound of my voice that says, hey, I want to receive Jesus as my Savior, I want you please to slip up your hands right now. Right now. Thank you, Jesus. I can see a hand in the back there. I can see another hand there. Is there anybody else that will say, I want to receive Jesus? I want to be born again. Jesus said, you must be born again. You must be born again. I see that hand. Is there anybody else? God is calling you today. God is calling on you today. Don't miss that opportunity. Surrender your life to Jesus. All right. We see two hands raised at the back there. Pastor Barry, would you please go to the back of them? Miss uh, Sandy, Pastor Steve, would you go to the back of them right now? Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. And I'm going to pray this prayer. I want you to, everybody to pray this prayer with me today. Everybody. From your heart. Okay? And you raise your voice. And say this with me. Say, Dear Lord Jesus, I come before you today as a sinner in need of a Savior. I need a Redeemer in my life. Come into my life, Lord Jesus, and forgive me of all my sins. Forgive me of my past. I surrender my heart, my life to you, Lord Jesus. Today, I believe in my heart, and I confess with my mouth that God the Father raised Jesus from the dead. <coughs> for my salvation and my justification I receive him now in my life I turn my back on the world and on the devil today I declare before men before angels and before demons I belong to Jesus his blood cleanses me from all unrighteousness and today, I am saved. I am born again. I surrender my life to Jesus. Let's put our hands together for Jesus. <coughs> you say, is that all I got to do? Yeah. You can't save yourself. He saves you. He delivers you. And He sanctifies you. Now, we want to encourage you to be in church. Be in church every Sunday. Amen? Be in church and the Lord will bless you. All right. I know it's Thanksgiving. Let's take our tithes, gifts, and offerings real quickly, please. Let's take our tithes, gifts, and offerings real quickly, please. Now, I was telling Rosie, I was telling Jody about this yesterday. Uh, I was telling her that God always gives seed to the sower. If you position yourself as a seed sower, God will bless you. I went to a service yesterday, all right, I was telling, I, was, I woke up yesterday morning, and I told Rosie, this is what I told Rosie, because we believe in God for a building in uh, Jacksonville, Florida, right? We need a building that will hold a Bible college, amen, that will hold, and here as well, all right, we can do it here, <clears throat> but I want Jacksonville to have their own, 
So I needed to sow some seed. I said, I woke up this in the morning and I said to Rosie, we've got to get some seed into the ground. Okay, we've got to get some seed into the ground. Well, we've got a lot, lot of bills to pay. We've got TV to pay. We've got staff to pay. We've got light bills to pay. But I said, no, 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 no. We've got to pay. We've got to put some seed into the ground. So I said to her, write a check to pastor, a pastor in San Antonio. And then last night we went to a service. Uh, uh, you know him here. <clears throat> he had a, a new building. So I said, okay, praise God. I'm going to show you $1,000 here there as well. Amen. Can you say amen? And I was telling Rosie, uh, Jody yesterday, I said, learn to position yourself as a sower. Learn to give God a $100 seed. Learn to give God a $1,000 seed. Learn to give God. Are you listening? Can you say amen? And I've done that. I've done that. And I've got my seed today. So yesterday I sowed a seed for the church in Jacksonville. Can you say amen? Stop tipping God, man. Stop tipping God. You want God to change your finances? Give! It wouldn't shock me to give God to give God a thousand dollars. It wouldn't shock me to give God five thousand dollars. Just do it. This is what we're doing this weekend. I told Rosie, I said, we're going to get some seed into the ground. Got to get some seed into the ground. Because I don't know about you, you know how much it's going to cost me to do that crusade in Pakistan? $100,000. Right? And you know how many souls are going to be saved? Hundreds and thousands of souls are going to be saved. What's the cost? What's the value of a soul? You know you're living at the end of time. And you're pussyfooting around your tithe and your gifts and your offerings. Come on now. Come on now. That money belongs, God gives you money to be a blessing to humanity. Can you say amen? So let's take, if you're watching Jacksonville, you give to your campus. Jacksonville's campus is faithliftjacks.org. Louisville's campus is faithliftchurch.org forward slash give. Lift up your seed right now and say, Lord, thank you for giving me seed as a sower to sow into the kingdom for the work of God. Amen. For the work of God. Amen. In Jesus' name. So go ahead and come and give your seed to God right now. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. In two weeks' time, there will be a convention in Mauritius. Faith Lift will be, Faith Lift Church in Catrimon will be one year. Amen. Can you say amen? Glory to God. So we give God praise. What's today's date? 11, 19, 2023. All right. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. All right. Praise God forevermore. Can you say amen? amen. Pastor Steve, would you close, come and close in prayer, please? Remind them about the food after that. <coughs> speaking to the mic amen uh, what a great word today thank you pastor glenn and uh you know we were here for two reasons today and those were the two gentlemen that got saved that gave their life to christ amen nothing else matters amen we're here to win souls and uh i noticed james um when we were doing praise and worship he was singing with us i, I started to go down and get him but i knew that he had something on his mind and he told me when we were back there that uh, he wasn't here by chance. It was meant to be. So I give God praise for James and the other gentlemen that, that you know, God led you here. Amen. And, uh, you know, that, that, that's, that's why we're going to celebrate. We're not celebrating because of Thanksgiving. We're celebrating because God just delivered two souls into the kingdom. Amen. That's what we give God praise for. You know. And I, and I just want to say this before, before we do Psalm 91, get Psalm 91 equipped. You know, when Pastor Glenn was going through talking about, 
you know, God blessing you, God doing things and, and for you. I remember when I was sick. I remember when I was down. I remember when I was down. And uh, I, didn't, I, I didn't know what was going on, but God did. And God got us through. And I'm so thankful, you know. His, his mercy, his grace is not just for one person. It's for everyone. We're all entitled to it. Amen? Amen. Let's get Psalms 91 quit. Paul, you got it up? You're probably waiting on me. Amen? All right. Yeah, we know it. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress. My God in him will I trust. Surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noise and pestilence. He shall cover thee with his feathers, and under his wings shall thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the earl that fly by day, nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasteth in noonday. A thousand shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. Only with thine eyes shall thou behold and see the reward of the wicked. Because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the most high, thy habitation, there shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. They shall bear thee up in their hands, lest thou dash thy foot against a stone. Thou shalt tread upon the lion and the adder, the young lion and dragon shall thou trample under feet. Because he has set his love upon me, therefore will I deliver him. I will set him on high because he has known my name. He shall call upon me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. And with long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. We're Psalms 91 equipped. Amen. Amen. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forever. Amen. Amen. And Father, thank you. Let's go ahead. We can give a hand clap. Amen. 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 And Father, thank you for this food that's been prepared downstairs. We thank you for all the hands that put it together, but we know it was your divine hand that made it possible. May it be nourishment and strength for our bodies. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. God's already into your work week. Amen. He's into your Monday. He's working it out. All right. Your Tuesday, your Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. And guess what? Sunday, be back here and get some more of this good word.